Let, let me show you another new piece of sound, a statement by this four person. What would your reaction be if the DA decides against bringing any charges after what you've seen? I will be sad if nothing happens. Like that's that's about my only request there is is for something to happen. We wanted to get you back because you walked us through this. Some of what you said people picked up. There's the four person. When right. she says something happens, it seems to logically sound like they act. She hopes the DA acts and indicts the people they recommended, some or all of them. With a day to absorb all this, um, do you stand by what you said last night, that you still see this as bad for Trump? Uh, and what else is important about the story? Well, I think it's clearly bad for Trump. I mean, everything that's come out on this uh, says to me that he's about to be indicted. Um, the whole investigation was focused on him. Everything surrounded him. All of the various aspects of this investigation, whether it's the call to Secretary Raffensperger, whether it's the call to Governor Kemp, uh, the fake electors, Rudy Giuliani going to Georgia, all of this stuff is coming together. Um, and I think what this reflects is, is that there is a recommendation, which we knew about before this four lady even came out, that there would be people indicted. And if people were going to be indicted, I think it was pretty obvious that the capo de tutti capo would be going down with the crew. I mean, I just don't see yeah. how you can bring an indictment without Trump. I, I think you make a fair point that the grand jury's view is that 10 plus people should be indicted. And so that looks like a multi prong multi-person conspiracy, and then that goes up to, does the beneficiary get included, as you put it? Right. Um, then you have what I mentioned, this interview with NBC's Blaine Alexander, and the way that this four-person, you know, people could talk how they want. It's rare right. to hear them, but that at times almost sounds excited. Oh, this was so awesome and cool. Take a, take a listen. My coolest moment was shaking Rudy Giuliani's hand. That was really cool for me. I, I made a point of of stopping them and being like, wait, before we, before we go back to this, can I shake your hand? Because this is an honor to meet the guy. It was really neat for me. Honest, excitable. Right. We, we showed other experts, though, who say this, this is really a little bit out of bounds or maybe very. Your thoughts? No, I look at, I, I've had lots of grand juries. Mm -hmm. I probably went before hundreds of grand juries mm -hmm. and met with lots of grand jurors. People get very excited. They get into this. They're taken out of their normal life, everyday cycle of whatever they're doing. And all of a sudden, they're immersed in the criminal justice system. Mm -hmm. And they're investigating the mob or they're investigating white-collar criminals. Uh, and people take this to heart. They take it very seriously. Let me press and you on that. Is it possible then you see a bit of a, what we might call an elite bias? Those of us who might be accustomed to some of this because of professional lives and otherwise, um, have some sort of surprise or disdain, some people, at the fact that what you're saying is you've seen this in other grand jurors, that the emotional response is, whoa. Yeah, no, I think this is, I mean, she is basically no different than a lot of regular trial jurors I've had or regular grand jurors I've had. I mean, people are brought out of their regular lives to do something yeah. that's quite extraordinary. Having uh, said that, if you're the DA and you're preparing indictments, is this helpful? Um, I wouldn't say it's hurtful. Because, Why not? Because this Don't is, you want to have the usual secrecy? Well, the usual secrecy really isn't quite as important here. This is not the charging grand jury. It's going to be a different grand jury that the charges are brought to. Uh, she's discharged from her duties. She was given certain rules by Judge McBurney. Uh, Do you see any evidence she's broken those rules? Um, you know, kind of a little bit by rolling her eyes with the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. Yeah, that she, about that she may have, you know. She may have used communication to convey that which she wasn't supposed to which say. Which she wasn't supposed to say. Which is yeah. somewhat lawyerly. Um, yeah, but again, <laughs> we're, we're talking about regular people that are taken out of their yeah. normal situations and, and are suddenly put in extraordinary circumstances. So your legal colleagues who are dinging her uh, yes or no are are being too harsh on her. I think they're being way too harsh on her. Interesting. I mean, look, I think she has been put into an exceptional situation. True. And, and citizens all the time are asked to perform this duty. And, and they, in, in every single situation that I've been in, I mean, with very few exceptions, have I ever seen a juror who has not taken their 
oath seriously, who has not considered the evidence seriously. Yeah, that, I mean, she said that. No, you remind me. Look, most people don't do this. You're reminding people you've dealt with this. You've seen that level of right. excitement. People use colloquialisms. People say, oh, that was cool. And that they still tend to participate the way they're supposed to, because that's why we rely on regular That's people. right. And she's a, of a different generation. Yeah.